Here we are then, let's get started. We have a £140 booking foot here and I've made sure that I've taped it down very well with this gummed tape. You have to wet the tape and stick it on the picture. Um, the only thing that you might find about that that you might not like is the fact that you do have to use a ruler and cut the picture out with a scalpel. But to be honest with you, it's well worth it to achieve the effect you want. This will hold my paper down solidly. It shouldn't let go at all. I've traced her out, so I used um, a picture. I used my picture and a piece of um, trace down underneath. I stuck the picture here and then put the trace down underneath and that, that means I can lift it up to look and Bob's your uncle, we have our picture. Don't be afraid of tracing because, you know, sometimes the drawing can put you off. Um, I can't draw faces, I can't draw faces and that's fair enough and if that's the case then don't be afraid of using something like trace down. The colours I want to use for my face, we're going to start off by painting the whole face the lightest colour it is. So the palest colour that we have here that we're looking at on our picture. And that means we're going to make up our paint first. Here we go. And we will be working with three colours predominantly. We have, this is Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and later on we may be adding some French ultramarine to darken it. Choose a couple of good wells because you're going to be making a goodly amount of colour. Start off with your burnt sienna and that's going to come in over here and I'm going to make up a reservoir of colour, a goodly amount of colour so that I can keep coming back to it as I need it and don't have to keep on mixing because when we mix and mix and mix you'll find that your colour will change. There's no way we can get exactly the same colour mix. Into that burnt sienna I want to add a bit of alizarin crimson. Now if you imagine that this is going to be 70% of our colour mix, I'm now adding 10% of alizarin and that is going to make it quite a bright, screamy orange. Very, very red, very, very bright. I don't want it to be that bright. Into that, knock it back now, add probably 20% of burnt umber. And that will knock it back into a brown. So pull that through. And you're looking for this quite dark colour. That's quite a dark, hefty colour. And at the moment, the texture of the paint is just like emulsion paint. Emulsion that you'd paint on the walls and it's dark. Really, really dark. Therefore, I want to empty my brush. Empty it, get rid of as much paint as you can. And the scrubbings go into the palette next door. Get rid of the light shine. And into that I'm going to add lots of water. I'm not tapping it on the edge of the water pot, so let me show you. Here's my water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, if you want to use a sponge or um, a spray or just pour it, that's fine. Eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. I want thin, thin, watery paint. We're talking about the palest colour. Let's try it. Even that's too dark. So another two, three. I'm up to about 20 brushfuls of paint there. A lot of paint in there and I want it thin, thin colour. Something like that, and some more. That's better, this is what I'm looking for. That thin, thin colour. And you and I are going to run a wash. Not a muck, I'm going to run a wash. And to do that, I'm going to pop this over here out of the way. And if you're at home, you can, you've got choices. You can either 
tip your palette up so that um, you can reach it and get to it. What I want to do here, I need to be at an angle, I'm going to use my little, let me come out a bit so that you can see what I'm going to do. I've got a little dragon pot and I'm just going to lift my picture up onto the dragon pot so that I have this angle. And again, I'm going to bring you in I just want to bring you in so that you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. In fact, I'm going to try and bring you a little more, like that. And I want to run a wash over this girl's face. I'm going to avoid the eyes and I want to avoid the lips. But from the top right down, nice wash. I want a big brush. So for this, I'm going to go into this very, very scruffy number 11. This is my large sable brush. And I intend to come in here and pick up the paint and I'm really going to run it, just like you would if you were painting a wash on a sky. So I want to come into the paint and we're going to come across the picture like that. And every time I do that, I'm going to pick up the drip line pull it across. There's your drip line. This is why you're at an angle. You come back, pick the drip line up and you pull it across. Come across, pick up the drip line, pull it across. And gravity will do the work for you. Gravity is going to pull the paint down the page. So you get a hold of it, pull it across. Again, pick it up, pull it over. And it's a rhythm to this. You find your own rhythm the time it takes for it to run down. Around the eyes, like that. I'm not going into the eyes. And every time I dip back into the palette, I swirl the paint round because if I don't, the grains of paint that are a bit heavier than the others will sink to the bottom and the tip of my brush will land up being darker. I'm not going into the tear ducts, but I am doing that little bottom ledge of an eyelid. So in there, round through there, come back, pick it up, run it across. You must not let this drip line dry. If it dries, you'll get a hard line. The other thing I don't want you to do is to go back. Don't go back into this. If you go back and you touch it, it will, it will be a mess. So don't do it, leave it be, just leave it be. Round the mouth, and then I'm going to just come round here, like that. And then I'm coming round the chin, and I'm going to run that just down into the neck area like this. I'll come out a little bit so that you can see where I'm going with the neck. So just pull it down. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and with some water on the brush, start over here and I just want to bleed that out. Because I have plans for that later. This is one of the few times that I would paint a picture and not paint the background. I've got real plans for you and I for the background. And I, if I were to do it now, I'd have to be leaning on it to paint my face. We're going to have a go with some brusho and some gold paint, all sorts of things. So for now, just leave that be. I'll tell you what I have missed there. And I'm just going to pick up some paint now. I see that I didn't do that little bit of a shelf in there. That's it. All done. Now that has to dry before we can do anything else at all. It has to dry. And that's the whole key to everything that we're going to do today. Let it dry before you go in for the next coat. Everything is dry now, so I'm ready to carry on and to start shaping my face. And when I'm looking at this, I want to get the curves in on the planes of her face. At the moment, she's dead flat and we want to curve her. We want to curve that face. To do this, I want to take our thin mix and we're going to lift into that one more brushful of our thick colour mix here. 
This is the reservoir colour that we made in the first instance. And if I add this to here, I'm not actually making it darker, I'm just making the paint thicker. And as a consequence, when we lay this as another coat onto the paint that we already have, we'll be glazing one coat on top of another, and it will look darker. And this is where we're going. We're going to use this pattern that I have here, and you can um, print this down for yourself. Here are the shapes that we're going to be making with our girl. Let me talk you through them. As we go, let me talk you through. I want to come in in the first instance, bring my water a little bit closer. And the first thing I want to do here is come in and introduce these big shadows right into those cheeks. You can see how much darker the paint is. I rinse and I dab and I come in and I just run that along there. I rinse and I dab and I run that along there once. Rinse, dab, come back and do it again. All right. You've got to get there before it dries. So don't stop, don't talk, don't do anything else, just pop it in. This goes from the top of the ear into the nose, out to the angle of the jaw. I'm not worried about going over into the hair at the moment. So just gently, gently do that. And you've always got to come in from the side that you're going to blend. Don't go into the paint and push it out. That will make a mess. Do it this way, please. Just come in and gently blend it. If it goes wrong, please don't touch it. Leave it be. We'll go back and I'll show you how to go in and rectify that later. This here underneath the lips, you have the chin shape here. And this makes this dog bone shape underneath that bottom lip. I want to come in and drum that around that bottom lip. Then imagine where the chin would be. Fill it in until you have your dog bone. Then you're going to rinse and get rid of the water on your cloth. Come in and soften that. Rinse, dab. Always dab. Don't ever, ever go to this paper with a really wet brush. And then I want to run it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until I've got the chin shape. Come back, get rid of that. Gently, gently run it backwards. And it's hygiene, really. You've got to think about hospitals, keeping this brush as clean as you can keep it. And... It's water control, it's knowing how much water to use. If I take my paint again, and I'm going to go into this curve here, this crease in the eye socket. So if I come through there, through here, and then as a general rule, this area here is quite shaded. So you want to just drop that in there. And I'm going to nudge and budge that, smudge it, nudge it and budge it and then come in this side and just bleed that away and soften it and just pull it down the side of her nose until it vanishes. All right, so gently, gently. If I move it up just a little more, I'm just thinking I might be able to get you in a little bit tighter to see see what I can do for you. There you go. And this time into this eye socket, I want to come in. So around the socket like that, follow the crease. And then there you have that dark shadow underneath that widest part of the brow. We have to nudge and budge and smudge that this way. And then I get hold of this and I nudge it, smudge it and budge it, and I run it down the side of her nose, not down the middle of her nose, down the side of her nose. And I'm going to come in with a clean brush and just gently, gently wash it away until we can't really see anything. That all has to dry a little bit because at the moment it's, it's wet and if I go near it, I'm going to smudge it and I will create cauliflowers. So don't go near that for a minute. 
This will be the hairline and the hairline is going to create a shadow on the face. What we'll do is we'll load the brush up and I'm going to run it up to the middle of the forehead. So from here up and round like that. Rinse and dab the drips and then come in and we're going to just do that once. Dab the drips, do it again and hopefully that should give us a decent drip. Decent drip. That will give us a decent shadow for goodness sake. Who's the drip now? I am. I don't want to touch this at the moment because that's wet and if I go into that it will cauliflower here. So leave it alone, go somewhere else. This is dry down here. What I will do on the tip of her nose, tip of her nose here, her nose comes down and then it goes back into her face. So there you would have that rounded shadow. And what we're going to do with that is come in above it and just blend it like that. It'll look odd for the minute, but don't, don't worry about it. We're going to come in in a minute and we'll deal with that later. So just get that shadow in for now. That's all right. Keep testing it to see where it's wet because we don't want to go where we're wet. So now I can come down here and I'm going to just seek that into there, slip it in and then more pressure on the brush so that the shadow becomes wider down till it gets to there, lift off, lift off, lift off. That's it. And then I can rinse and I can dab and this time I have to come in from this direction. So I come in and that's the brush stroke that keeps it wet. Rinse and dab and then this is the brush stroke that will blend it. I reckon you get three goes at that. One, two, and I'm going in again. And if you try any more, you can land up with messes. And if you haven't put enough down, I think that's a bit narrow. If you've taken too much out, as I have, don't worry about it. Leave it alone because you can go back and you can just do that again. So for now, I just want to dry that. There we go, I saved you the hairdryer. Um, the, important, the important thing about this is please do it in layers and do be patient because if we do rush into it, that's when the accidents occur. This is not, absolutely categorically not, a wet into wet technique. It is wet onto bone dry and if we don't obey those rules, we can land up with some terrible messes. I want to use this same paint and I'm going to bring it in now and I want to just run it here around the nostrils, so round there and round here. And the important thing to note here is that we have a dark crease in the, in the nostril, but around it, this is just shadow. So come in and soften on the outside edge. So again, control of your brush and don't let it dry and just gently, gently work your way around it. That's it, okay? If you get a blobby bit on the end, don't keep pulling it out, go back into it and push it back. And that really works very well. Okay, we've done that. Next thing I want to do is show you this area here, this. This is your glabella. And it's an indent between your forehead and, and here. This is the bridge of your nose, effectively. and it's a very important shadow because it really, really does change the way this looks. And we're going to load the brush and all I want to do is between one eyebrow and the other, I'm using almost the whole of the side of the brush and I'm doing that. And again, I've got to come in quickly and sweep it underneath. Come in quickly again, nice clean brush. And this time you're going to sweep it above. But it gives you that crease there in the bridge of the nose. It's an important one because if you're painting somebody who's young and pretty and Botoxed and, and has lovely plump skin, that tends to be a U shape. As we get older and we smile and we laugh and we get these creases here by our, the ends of our eyebrows here, that will often turn that U into an N. So if you're painting a portrait, that's one to watch. 
and age is really important with that one. It really is ageism. We have two shadows here into the corner of the eyes. Here they are. And you can see it on the photograph. Let me find that for you. Here it is, these shadows here on the corner of the eye. See, we've done the glabella, here it is. It's a bit vague in here. We've done this, and we've done the, this on the bottom of the nose. We've been round these creases. We've put this shape in, but we're now going to introduce this here. So again, load your brush. And this is from the top of the eyebrow into the eye, and it just overlaps that cheek shadow as well. Again, rinse and dab, come in and blend. Rinse, dab, and come in and blend. And we're going to do that on the other side too. So from here into there, overlap a little bit, fill it in, rinse and dab, come in and blend. Rinse and dab, and come back and blend. If any of this goes terribly wrong, please don't worry. I want to show you how we're going to rectify that in a little while. But for now, let's just get the shapes onto our girl's face. That's the important thing. I want to be thinking now about these gorgeous, lovely little shapes here that we see here. And you'll find that this will be a teardrop here and then you have two L shapes either side and none of any of those bits touch this, touches the other. They're all sitting separately. You'll see from the picture, the photograph, that she actually has this beautiful skim of light, this line of light along the top of her. I'm going to just bring you in a little bit. that light along the top of the lip here and then we have light either side of this teardrop in the middle. This is what we're aiming for, this. So bear with me and we will have a little go with our girl. Might want to go down a brush size. I've been using a number eight but now for finer details this here is a number, it's number four. They're all rosemaries and they're all lovely sable brushes because they have great water carrying potential. I'm coming into here and this is the septum of the nose, right here. And this teardrop sits right underneath that and it sits between the bow of the lips like that. I'm bringing you in. And whilst that's still wet, if I come in now with a thirsty brush, so I'm really drying my brush, and if I wick out an area of paint, that will give me a highlight in that area. And that looks quite cool when you've got the full face, full frontal there. Let me come out a little bit. And then either side of that, tricky shapes, we'll do one at a time. This heads from the same place up here, give it a gap, and this comes down towards the peak of the bow of the lip, but it doesn't touch it. And then it runs along the top of the lip, but it doesn't touch it. And you're going to turn that into an L shape. And that L shape with a clean brush, you want to come in and you're going to just fade it away. So again, clean brush. And you see this drippy bit here, don't like that. I'm going to come back into that and what I want to do with that is pick the brush up and push the brush, brush back up. Push it back up. There we are. Let's do the other side while you're in tight. So down here, down towards the peak of the bow of the lip, along the top of the lip, turn it into an L shape like that. And then this time I've got to come in and I have to blend that from this side. And you must, must, must go in from the side that you're blending. There's a little bit of a drip, I go into it, I push it back. Okay, 
happy with that and suddenly you've got the shape now on the mouth the mouth is curved that's brilliant that's just where we want to go with that so we're happy with that good 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 next thing we're going to do we, we've got dryness around where we want it to be so I'm happy with that that's good next thing I want to do now is be thinking about the shapes down the nose and around the eyes in here we have an eyeball and that's really really quite important because we've got the shadow that's under the eye we do have shadow under the eye here and I want to put that in. I think I'm going to go back to the larger brush. This is the number eight. And this time I want to go back into the eye socket and I'm trying to think about making this a nice shape. So back into the eye socket, another layer of paint and I'm going to bring that round there like that. Do one at a time because this is rather a, a large amount to worry about in one go. And this you've got to blend it around the outside like this. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. All right, so I'm happy with that. All right, so that's one. Let's do t'other. Paint on the brush. Round that eye socket again. Follow it, follow it, try and make them even, think about where this one went and then follow the pattern so that you have two shapes that are more or less the same. And to be honest with you, most of us have one eye that is smaller than the other. And you will see from this portrait, this painting photograph that I've given you, that that is also true of this girl. It tends to be that this eye is more open, is a larger eye than the other. So uh, you will notice that, particularly if you trace it. There you go. So we have that, that fold and that crease around the eyes. Perfect, happy with that. The next thing we need to do, the bottom of these nostrils tends to be a little darker. A smaller brush again. And what I want to do is just come in here and introduce some darkness there. Rinse and dab and then just happily blend. Keep the brush clean, otherwise all you're doing is moving pigment around and making a mess. So just keep that brush clean. I often just dab and dip and, um, and I rinse and I dab between each brush stroke, to be honest with you, because that way I know that I'm always going to be clean with it. So that's really important. This down here, I wasn't really very happy with that in the first instance because I think I took too much paint away. Let's just go back in and reinstate that. Every time I go back into my paint, I swirl the brush around to make sure that there's no sediment in the bottom of the paint. So I just sneak that in next to that, wider brush, almost all of the width of the brush. Lift off, lift off, lift off. Rinse and dab and then we come back down that line there with the damp brush to keep it damp. Rinse and dab and come back in and do it again. And hopefully that's a little better this time it is. That's lovely. Next thing we need to do, of course, we've shaped this around here, but hang on folks, we haven't got shadow around this. This is dry now, and in actual fact, this shadow, large as it is, would still be darker as it curves away around the face. Again, you can see the depth of darkness here and over here. This is a much darker area here. So, load your brush up, be brave. Brave and fearless, big brush stroke this is, and we're coming down to the, I think we'll come down to the middle of the chin, starting up here, and we're glazing, so we're going over that again, but this will be lighter, so round there. Rinse and dab. Come in, run it round, rinse and dab, and come back and run it round again. And there you are, you see you've now got a shadow on that chin. That has to dry before we can go back and do the other side. But what we can do is come down and put a shadow down the side of this neck. This is quite interesting here. We're going to have to put shadow under the chin as well. 
So initially we'll lose our definition, but that's I'm not worried about that. What I want to show you is that when we come to this chin area and the neck, you have this angle. And wherever a shadow, one shadow, meets another shadow, they curve in the corner. So this corner will be triangular shaped. Let's and dab come in. And this time I have to come in this way and just take that down there. Alright, we have to leave that until that's dry before we can go back to it. We have to go somewhere else. Therefore, how about painting these strange shapes down here? We've already got this, but we're going to go back into it a little bit and make it darker. And I want to come down her nose and put this shape round here and put the sides of her nose in. I'm talking about this. Now this is really, really quite overexposed on this side, so we're not seeing much of a shadow here. But please imagine for this exercise that it is there. I want to paint this, okay? And this comes down the side of her nose, Not nothing sits in the middle, nothing. Down the side of her nose and then round here and round the nostril again. So let's load up. I'm going to do the right hand side first because it's easier to paint for me. Everything on the right, and I should think that for left handers it's the other way around actually. I want to bring you in a little bit so that you can watch this carefully and see what I'm going to do. I'm coming back up to here. And then I'm coming down the side of the nose as though I'm going to join up the U. Get to the U and now paint this strange H shape down there. And this one we need to get into to blend there. Wipe it down the side of her nose, just wipe it down like that. You might want to come back a little bit on that. And then we're going to just blend that. Just soften it and on the nostril. And lo and behold, we have the side of her nose. Do the other side. Okay. So again, come into here. Take it down the side of her nose as though you're going to join up the this U shape down here. Get to it and then you're going to come back around the nostril like that. So a really strange edge shape. I'm going to just swipe that down there to soften it. And then I'm going to soften it into the eye socket and then just wipe it gently, gently down and round there. I've gone over my lines a little bit, so let's just soften those. And we have a nose. Yay! Having done that, we should now be dry down here to come back around this area. Now for me, this is really cacandy because I have to kind of work it this way. When you're at home, it would be much easier for you to turn your work around so that you can sort of work it from an easy angle for yourself. Me, I'm going to have to sit sideways and I want to come down and round. And as I get to the chin where I was before, lift off, rinse, dab, come in, soften, blend move it round. I'm not sure I need to even go back there. There you go, happy with that, that's fine. And realistically, all I need to do with her now is to drop in a little bit of something a bit darker there on the nose here. Because mine wasn't dark enough. And I need to just come back down around this shadow here. So again, with a brush full of paint, back into that shadow, and that's good because that's going to mean that's a second coat in that corner, and that will be a glaze there, and I want to bring that round, and I'm going to just blend it away like that. Job done. And I was just a little bit cheeky down there because that was still damp, so it has run a little bit. Never mind, I'm not concerned. Right, everybody, 
Now we really, really need to dry that. And I'm going to put the hair dryer on it and I really want that bone dry. If the paper is any way cockled, I need it to go flat again and I'm going to dry it to within an inch of its life. I want it really bone dry. So I will see you in a minute. Right, she is bone dry. Everything's nice and flat. I can touch it. Nothing's going to harm it, apart from you and I. And what you're going to do next is going to frighten the life out of you. And I apologise in advance, but truly, it's a job that needs to be done and it will make so much difference. I think you'll be quite surprised. This is where a big, big brush like this, again, this is a sable, it's a number 11, will come into its own. It doesn't need to be too soft because it won't um, aggravate the paper and we're really going to annoy it now. Um, we're going to blend it and to do this I want to come in and scrub at the paper with this brush. It needs to be damp wet. So again, wet your brush and just one dab two dabs and I'm going to come into this and I'm literally going to do this and effectively I'm taking the top layer off the paint. Keep it clean and you're going to have to wet all of the paper otherwise you will get tied marks. Don't worry about the excess coming over the edges onto the white and I'm just blending, blending. And what we're doing, I'll show you in a second when I um, have finished and I can bring the camera right in. We're taking probably a quarter of the paint away again. And because my paper is this Bockingford and it's got a rough surface, it's a not surface, it means that the tops of the hills on the paper are coming through and when we get close it will look just like um, skin pores and it gives you a lovely look. This is why I kept on saying to you if you make a mistake don't stress it because this is the time now when you can really scrub your paper and you can go back in there and rectify anything that looked a little bit dodgy with the washes. All right, so if I bring you right in that tight, you can now see all the little bits and pieces and all the little lines where the paper is shining through. We've got the white shining through and it looks just like skin pores. When we dry this, it's going to suddenly become a lot lighter because watercolour will dry up to a third lighter and you can soften the edges of your shadows. And I have to say to you, this is one of the reasons why I really, really like Bockingford because if I tried this on with some of the delicate papers like Arsh, I can't do it very well either with Sanders Waterford, I've tried it. Um, I come to grief and Therefore, it's really quite important to know what your paper will do and how it will work. But you're looking at that now and you can see how soft that is and that you actually do have shapes now on this face. We can see the triangles in the cheeks. They're there, we can see them. We can see the triangles in the eye socket here and this shadow in the eye socket. The vague glabella here. You can always go back in and darken some more and you can blend again. But what you have to do between every single layer, I'm afraid, is get that hair dryer out and dry it. So let me do that now. So once again, that's bone dry now, absolutely bone dry. And what we need to do is think about refining our face. We still need to go down a whole tone level. We're all right as we are at the moment, but we still need to take it somewhat darker. I want to come now to a number six brush, and I'll be using that with the eight. And we're going to think about where we need to be darker. Now, your choices are, we can come in here with our original colour. This is what we've been using here. And I can now, if I want to, add another welt 
a whole wodge of our lovely reservoir mix. You see, you get all the technical terms with me. That will give you a darker colour again. And the fact that you're laying that on top of this again will also mean that it will be darker because that will be a whole other layer, a whole other glaze. Let me show you what that will do for you. Let me just show you. So again, let me bring you a little bit closer. You're too far out. Oh, you're far out, man. And with this, what I would do with this, I am back to the number eight here, but I'm not going to take that shadow in as far. You make your shapes smaller now. So we can do that. And then I can come into here and I can introduce a darker shadow into that cheek. Rinse and dab back and run. So I'm going to just speed this up a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing, but you've got the technique now. I'm coming back in there, narrower, smaller, smaller, smaller. There we go. Each time you add more pigment to your colour, it's like adding extra, um, how can I describe it? You're, you're adding more pigment, you're adding more grains of colour. And Winsor and Newton describe their tubes of paint as being tins of baked beans. Now, I know that sounds balmy, but they say that they're paint the um, binder is the tomato sauce and the pigment are the baked beans and you and I started off with cheap um, ch cheap shop uh, baked beans tin of baked beans and what we've actually done is we have added more and more so that by now I reckon that we're actually on Heinz it's a clever little analogy, but it really does work. It's um, it's the quantity that we're putting on the paper. And the very fact that this is coat number two, or even three, isn't it, when you consider that initial background colour that we laid on, um, each layer you add, you're building up. And the reason for this, and not going wet into wet, is because this keeps your colours beautifully clean. It means that we could add blues and greens on top of this if you wanted to give the glow of the sea or the glow of the sky on her skin and it wouldn't make it dirty and that's really important because if you mixed all this on the palette or indeed mixed it on the paper when it was still wet you would have mud by now. So by doing this, we're keeping it clean. And that's the reason why we glaze. And it gives you control. It really does give you control. Smaller brush. And I'm going to just nip that back round that nostril like that. I want to come back into the end of the nose, tip of the nose. So just down here to reinforce that shape there. God bless her, she's lost her nose. She's lost the tip of her nose. But you see, we've we've done that and we're darker, but we're still not as dark as I intend to be. I've been working my way around the face. Um, a few more bits and pieces to do here, just a few. I want to come back into there and really put some depth into that. This is what you're doing now. You're adding depth to your picture. You're giving those, these are great big sort of holes in your face really, aren't they? The eye sockets. So we really want them to be a bit more, a bit deeper, a bit darker. I'm just twiddling and fiddling as I work my way round. Once again, if we land up with any marks on the paper, don't worry because we're going to blend again. And you can do this with this paper with impunity. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to worry about it. I'd like to just make this all a little bit more dramatic down here. So I'm coming down again. So don't worry if you lose initially 
this great detail, it doesn't matter. This is the whole point. You can go back and you can glaze again and it just gives it this wonderful depth. Wonderful depth. And this is what we're looking for. Okay. There we are. My next port of call now, we've done that and we have the darker browns on the face. I still think we need a bit more round here, to be honest. When you're looking at it on the camera screen, I can see that I would like to just do a little bit more of that. So rinse and dab and just swipe it. Don't fluffy brush it, just, just swipe it. Makes such a difference. The more times you lift off, the more marks you'll have in the paint. If you do it just once or twice, it will give you that lovely smoothness. And you can see now that I've done that, that this is much too pale. So come on, you and I together, brave and fearless, up there, round there, bosh. Rinse and dab, come in, get hold of it, and use the whole beautiful brush to just pull it and move it and soften it. Look at that. I've got this lovely brush. Use it. And um, I have to say to you, I struggle to do this with um, nylon brushes. Uh, you can, but you need a good brush, a really good quality nylon brush. If it's too hard, it scratches the paint away. Um, so have a practice first and see what you're comfortable with. I think that's probably the answer. Okay. Once again, I want to dry it before I go into the next stage. Patience is the key. Okay, now we're going to scare each other witness. There are some real, real darks here, real darks in this face, and we're going to try and achieve some of those now. I'm still talking about skin darks. We've, we still haven't um, started to work on the features, but if we now take this is our original mix. This is our original reservoir of colour. And what I want to do is bring that down into here. And into that, we're now going to use our French Ultramarine. And if we add French Ultramarine, it will turn it into quite a dark browny grey. And this is the colour that we're going to use next, the colour that's going to just make the whole thing sing and the whole thing's going to rock and roll and shake. We need that to be a little wetter than that. I want it to be a bit bluer than that too. That's better. I'm looking at this dark, dark colour. So here's our reservoir, and this is going to be our dark colour. With this, we tweak. Now we tweak. I want to take this, oh, and you do have to be brave. Please don't be frightened with this. It will work. And we're going to run that around the eye socket there. Only do a bit at a time, because if you do too much, and that all hardens too much and dries too dark, we might have issues. So just do a bit at a time. I'm going to get hold of this and pull it into that shadow that's there. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with this eye socket here, up and round. Rinse and dab and we come in and we blend. Like that. On the ends, come back into it, pull it back. Get hold of this, pull it back. Okay, next thing we want to do here, I think, is we're going to go back into these creases here, thin. And what you can do, if you want to, is have another brush that you use so that speed you up a bit. So this brush is the blend brush, this brush is the paint brush. Okay, so you can do that. There we are. And scary, scary, hairy, scary. This is the dark colour and now on this side of the face, you ready for it? We're going to come in and we're going to do a bit of that. So even smaller than the previous one. And 
I think I might need to, uh, let's try it with the smaller brush. I'm going to come in here and we're going to introduce a little shadow there. So pull it through, rinse, dab, get hold of it, pull it, soften and blend it. We're going to blend it in a minute, so don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about extra bits that have come over the edges like this. It's not important. I want to just make that really quite dark in there underneath her bottom lip. Just that little triangle there, that little bit, that little dog bone. So pull it round, pull it through, get hold of it, smudge the, each end of it like that, and then underneath and rock. Just rock until you're happy. Like that. There we are. Keep the brush nice and clean. That's lovely. And then I want to just make this a little bit darker down here. This is the shaded side of her face, so we get hold of that. Oh, I'll just splash her with water. Wasn't very friendly, was it? There we go. And as I say, if you've got a, a kind paper like this, you don't need to overstress on the blending because we're going to go back in in a minute. And we're going to do that in a minute. If you're painting a man, all of these shapes, one, two, three, four, you want to paint those quite darkly like this and then blend it away and that will give you your five o'clock shadow on a man. So that's how I would go about doing that. Okay. Now we've done that, let's go back. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm just going to have a little bit of dark because I just want to run a bit of dark down here in that shadow there, okay? So again, with the damp brush, blend, pull that side as well and blend like that. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll dry that, let me dry it, and then I'll come back to you and we'll blend it together, okay? And we'll soften the whole lot and I'll show you that it doesn't have to be that fierce, all right? Two minutes and I'll be back with you. Here we are, once again, she's bone dry and with my large brush, my number 11, and just a couple of dabs, I want to come in here and we're going to soften once again. Now be careful because we don't want to overdo this. Okay, so we're coming in and we're just softening, softening. Keep away from the whites of the eyes. I don't, I really, really don't want to um, make a mess of those. So try not to get this into the whites of the eyes. Soften that nose shape again. Make sure we wet all of the paper so that we don't land up with um, horrible watermarks. Trying to keep that out of the lips as well. And then I want to come around the eye socket with that. And I'm just wetting everything again to make sure that it's all softly blended. And I haven't missed anything. She starts to look a bit like the old Mona Lisa, isn't she? There you go, Moaning Lisa. Okay, that's all right, I'm happy with that. We can start working on the features now, but before we do, guess what? We need to dry it. We can legitimately start um, work now on the features. And this is the scrummy bit because you never really know who you're going to land up with. As you paint, just the tweak of a brush can change everything. And you, she just changes under your, under your brush. It, it's incredible. She can become, a, with a tweak of the mouth, she can become sassy or argumentative or kind. It's just incredible how you can change it. Let's start putting some colour into the eyes here. I think we're going to stick with blue, just like the photograph. And it's, it's quite dirty blue at the moment, purely and simply because I've been mixing the colours on the palette. So... You can go into a nice clear French ultramarine if you want to, but mine's quite grubby from the brown in it. I'm intending to lay it in over the whole eye. Now, 
truly and simply it's darker up here under the eyelid and then I'd very much like you to go for water and just pull the colour down because down here in the lower parts of the eye I want it to be as pale as you can make it. Look at the light in this girl's eyes here, here and this is what we want to try and achieve. So dark in the top here, that's fine. Go straight over the pupil, it doesn't matter for now, but deal with that later. Water, dab, and then come in and pull it down. And that can be so pale that it's almost not there. I don't care, I'd rather have it like that than the other way round. All right. It's of interest to you to realise that when you're painting like this and you're working with glazing, you have to work with transparent paints. You cannot do this if you're working with opaque paints because they won't lay on top of each other. They just obliterate each other. So it has to be transparent paints. Everything that we're using today is, well, apart from the paint gray, I think. Now, we're going to go into these lips next. I want to take alizarin crimson and I'm mixing it with just a little bit of the skin tone because I don't want her to be wearing screaming lipstick. So a little bit of the skin tone goes in there as well. And with this, the darker lip is the top lip. So beautiful Cupid's bow I want to achieve like that. And because this is the thinner lip and usually it's the lip that's in shadow, this is going to be darker. So put that in as a beautiful shape. And then with water, don't clean the brush completely. I want to pull the paint down onto our bottom lip. All right, it's not very dark at the moment and that's absolutely fine as well. We'll deal with that in a little bit. But for now, we just pull the color down, all right? If you want to, you can take a thirsty brush and just lift a bit of highlight, highlight out there. So that's all I'm going to do to that for now and leave it, just leave it alone. With that same red, teeny bit on the tip of the brush and I want to take that and I'm going to pop it into the tear duct there and into the tear duct there. And if they're big enough, and you can go into that with a thirsty brush. When a thirsty brush, I mean, it's thirsty, it's dry. And if you can go in there and just lift a little bit out of the middle, that will be cool too. So that's good. That's a good thing to do. All right. With these eyebrows, what I intend to do with that is use a mixture of Payne's Grey and burnt umber. I don't like one or the other. I think Payne's Grey is too harsh, but I don't like burnt umber either on its own. So I, I want a, a mixture of both Payne's Grey and burnt umber, and the two make quite a nice sort of dark brown that we can use for our eyebrows. And when I have that colour on my brush, I want to come in and start here and eyebrows grow upwards like that and they feather. So just imagine that you're painting your own, own eyebrows, ladies, like this. Feather them, you have the wing shape here, the curve, and then it will come down again. And as a general rule, your eyebrows are usually the same roughly width as the eye. Hers are a little bit wider, but that will, will excuse her. And the important thing here is when you've painted that in, leave some gaps so you get kind of highlights. Do you like to come in and have a look closer? And then with a damp brush, just come in gently underneath and I want you just to ground them because they grow from out of her face I don't want them to look as though they've been stuck on with blue tech. And keep it clean, 
These two colours together, I have to tell you, are kind of runners. They're blossomers and they will bloom and blossom if you, if you allow them to with water. So you take tight control of that and just keep coming in underneath until you make sure that it's not going to run down her face. So same colour, I'm coming back and working on the other side and I'm flicking, so flick upwards like that. A few little gaps if you can, little white gaps. Well, they're not white, they're skin coloured, aren't they? But that's, that's good, we want that, like that. And then same applies, rinse your brush, clean your brush and damp and get rid of the wet. And then gently, gently come in and smudge it. Now you see how that bleeds like bilio, so watch it. Again, rinse and dab, dry a brush this time so that I can wick up any moisture. But that's what I want, I want it to be soft and blended. And now it looks as though those eyebrows are actually on her face a little bit closer still because I'd like to show you under the eyes now. Under here, this is the bottom lid and then under that bottom lid we're just going to add a bit of shadow. I don't want to be painting eyelashes in there. I think it makes it look too fierce. So therefore if I come back with the colour that I used for my eyebrows, that same mixture, and I'm just gently going to run it from this side of the eye. See that? This is your tear duct. Nothing is above it and nothing is below it. It sits there all on its own. So if I come in from there and I run that around here. And then again, I'm rinsing and I'm dabbing and I'm going to just rock it backwards and forwards. And you can have as much, so that's lots. And if you want less, come in, keep it clean, come back pick up some of it, get rid of it. That's lovely, I'm happy with that. So that you've got this, this, this shading under the eye that just gives the hint of kind of smudged mascara or, or eyelashes. And again, this side, run it round from the edge of the eye, down into the tear duct there. Rinse and dab and then Matthew, called, Matthew Palmer calls that the two taps. Rinse and tap, tap, and then come back. Don't wait for seconds. Don't do this or that. That's not what you're interested in. It's rinse, tap, tap, and then come back and soften. There you go. Happy with that. That's lovely. Whilst we're there, and whilst you're with me here at this particular point, I'm going down now to a number two brush. And I'm looking at, this is the Payne's Grey, and I'm using the Artist Payne's Grey. Don't like Cotman, it's, it's very grey. Don't like Dale Rowney, it's very grey. But the Windsor & Newton is actually a nice bluey grey. Same colours as Indigo. And with this, in a thin mix, I want to come in here next to the tear duct, and I'm going to add a bit of shadow. Rinse dab and smudge that onto the eyeball and then I'm coming back rinsing and dabbing and I'm going to do it that way so that I get this lovely shaded graded shadow on the eyeball that you can sort of see that it's going to curve so that means that we're going to have to do it other corner as well so in there like that rinse dab and then we're going to Soften, 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 soften. Rinse and dab and blend. There we go. Like that. All right? So you're happy and you've got that lovely shadow. So you can see now one eye curves, eyeball curves, and the other one is flat. And it's an eyeball, so it has to, has to curve. So over here in the corner, like that, rinse and dab and come back and soften. And then we'll do the other side, the other corner, in here, next to the tear duct. 
shadow, that's it. And then we have to blend from this side. Got to be polite. You want to go up to your paint and say, hello paint, my name's Brush. Nice to meet you and I'm going to stroke you. All right, don't go in and shove it about, it's rude. There you go. So for the minute, let's just leave our eyes alone because I want them to dry. And what we'll do is we'll come back down to the nose. I'll stay where I am because I think you can see that quite well. The nose is basically two holes in your face and you have this hard, sharp edge and then this here is soft, just shadow. Hard, sharp edge and soft shadow. Let's do that. We'll use exactly the same colour that we used for the eyebrows. So that again was the Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber. And you're using that in single cream consistency. All right. And I want to create that lovely smooth curve there. Like that. Let's do the other one whilst I'm here. So that lovely, smooth, round curve. Like that. And then I'm coming in with my damp brush and I'm going to just, poor girl, stick it up her nose. There you go. As I say, watch these this colour because it is a runner and you don't want that to run down under her nose to suddenly become candlesticks. Thank you very much. So just be a little bit careful with that. Keep wicking it to make sure that we're keeping it clean. There we are. Right, so we've got that now. We've got those shapes. Let me just push that up a little bit because then we can do the lips whilst we're here too. Now these are fun. Oh, I love doing these. If we take some alizarin crimson and I mix that with some French ultramarine it gives me quite a wicked and fairly exciting purple and that's the colour I want to bring over here and introduce into the corner of that top lip there and here and that will give me the shadow in the corners of that lip. It will curve the lip in the same way that we did with our eyeballs. And then this top lip is curving down and in to her mouth. So again, I want that dark shadow along there. And what, you want, what I would like you to do with this is blend that, work gently and soften. And then we blend this And then we're going to, on the top lip, come across and just soften that dark, dark shadow. Okay? Like that. And we get rid of the watermark by coming back in just with water. Doing the whole thing just with water. Okay, so we've got our top lip. We also need to curve that bottom lip. Now, the only, we can't do that with these dark purples because it would really scream at you, wouldn't it? What we do is we just use the alizarin for that. I take the alizarin and again, I just want to add a little bit of our skin tone to that to take the screaming redness of it. And with this, I'm coming into both corners of the bottom lip as well, so into here. and into this side. And then I want to run that, this bottom lip curves out towards us and then into her face again. So that means that all the way along the bottom there, it's going back into shadow. So with that, we're going to come in and we're going to just soften this and soften this. Keep it clean, keep it clean. And then I'm just going to run that all along the bottom to blend that. 
and make sure it's all wet so that I don't land up with any cauliflowers and any marks. So for now we leave that but we have curved lips and they're curved in and round and over and so that's fine. Leave that for now, we'll come back to that in a minute. But what I want to do now is go back to my eyes. We'll work a little more with these. It's a, an amazing thing that we have around our eyes this dark shadow here, this dark line, this colour. And that's called your limbal ring, limbal ring. And that's what really tells us that the colour of this girl's eyes are blue. And I'm going back to my French ultramarine and I want to steady hand everybody, steady hand, all right? Because now we're coming in here and we're going to go around and we're going to go around. Try and do it in just two brush strokes like that. And again, around and around. And they really do have to be perfectly round. You can't get away with wobbly bits. But what I want to do is soften all of that. Just soften it. Like that. And I'm coming into this one and doing the same. Steady hand for this little bit. Soften it and soften it. And whilst that's all still wet, and still exciting, look at the light that's in her eyes here. If you want to, this is the time when you can add another colour. And I've got lemon yellow here because it's just an incredible screaming colour. And I want to just drop it into her eyes there and there. And I'm coming back with water to just nudge it, budge it and smudge it that well-known firm of solicitors. All right. This is a very good time if you've got aqua eyes and you want to introduce green into that, it would be beautiful. If your eyes were going to be um, brown with green you, for hazel eyes, this is the time to be introducing another colour. I love, love throwing in a little bit of that cadmium or Windsor orange because I just think that that is very exciting in a brown eye. So that's up to you. You can do that or not, up to you. But the lemon yellow is, is quite a screamer of a colour and it, it really will make her eyes look light and, and shiny and screamy. So that's brilliant. It's now time to come back down to the lips and if we look at our picture we can see here that some people have this middle lobe here in their lips and it can be quite exciting to paint if you want to. So let's just have a little go and I'll show you what I would do if I was intro introducing that into a painting. I would take the purpley colour that I'd mixed, that, that's the French ultramarine and the um, lizarin and I would just introduce two little triangles into that area there and then of course it's the usual story you need to come in and you just need to soften and you need to blend and that will give you that that shape there in the middle of the lip you can use your purple in the same way um, and come through into the bottom lip and here you have these kind of quite interesting striations in the bottom lip so again the creases so you can do that as well if you want to so as much or as little of that as you choose that's up to you and if your face is smaller than this and there isn't room for it I wouldn't do it at all but because our girl's mouth is quite large here I will don't worry about highlights at the moment because we don't need to worry about that we're going back in later so for now, let's just deal with some of that. If you feel anything's too harsh, just dampen your brush. Come in and just smudge it. Just gently, gently smudge it and budge it. So there's all of that. We can do any of that. I feel this side of the lip isn't dark enough. So in actual fact, 
and it's not vibrant enough. So here's alizarin crimson, and I just want to come in there, do that. This is glazing. This is glazing, look. And now I've done that, I need to come in underneath and I'm just going to do that. Rinse and dab. And then all you've got to do is that. Much more interesting, isn't it? Much more exciting and dynamic. Okay. When we put the pupils in, that's going to be quite scary because all of a sudden she'll be staring back at you out of the page. So be warned, we're doing that in a minute. If you fancy um, any colour on this at all with, with the eyes and the eye sockets, you can do that. You can choose a colour and you can go in there and drop a bit in. So this is um, French Ultramarine. And with that, how about you might fancy doing a bit of that. So again, come in and just blend it. This is glazing again, you're just adding colour. So you can add some blue to her eyes. Like this, put it in, just drop it over. I still want to see the skin colour underneath. But this means that we can just make her look as though she has a little bit of eyeshadow on, maybe. So it makes her more interesting to look at. That's quite interesting to pull it round the eye like that. I might do that on the other side. Here you go. So a little bit in the corner of the eye there. So you can do that if you'd like to. You can also, if you want to, take some alizarin crimson and we can put some colour on her cheeks. We'll do that in a minute though. I want to get these eyes in. I get quite anxious over the eyes, bear with me. I'd like to drop in our pupils. And the important thing here is a steady hand and a good brush with a good point because these have to be exactly the same size. They have to be perfectly, perfectly round and they have to be in the middle of the iris. I come in here and I'm going to swipe this brush around. Don't panic. So I've gone off a bit. So therefore I'm going to just bring it out a little bit. Big, big irises and big, big pupils. There we go. I've been known on smaller paintings to actually get in there with a pen because um, it can be blooming difficult sometimes. But we've got these great big starey, starey pupils now. There's a reason for that because we can put reflections in the pupils. And that makes the eye look so much more interesting. So just bear with it for a minute because that can be worth doing. I want to use this, I've got the Payne's Grey on the brush now, I've just put some water on the brush, get rid of the drips, and I want to use this brush to just run along that bottom shelf. And that curves up, back, into the eye, back up and round. So round here. But that will make the eyes stand out. Gosh, do you see how scary they are at the moment? scary scary eyes don't worry about it we'll deal with it in a minute when you get the reflections and what have you in there we'll be all right I want to use this brush again with the this is neat Payne's grey single cream thickness and with this I want to just take this and I'm going to run it straight across that top lid and realistically this is going to be tip of the brush next to the um tear duct and then as I come out into the middle of the eye I would be putting 
half the brush on there, more of the brush, more, 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 more as you come out. So tip of the brush next to the tear duct, harder, 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 harder. All right, to give you that sweep of the top eyelid. The other eye. So tip of the brush. More, 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 more. Flick. It's the Audrey Hepburn flick. And this is where you might decide that you'd like to introduce some eyelashes. And that's absolutely fine. The important thing to remember if you're going to do that is keep it lovely and thin and lovely and fine. And the eyelashes this side would be flicking out this way to this side. Little eyelashes. As you get to the middle of the eye, they would be flicking up, up. And then as we come out this way, your eyelashes are going to curve across the eyeball in some places like that. And they will flick up and out. All right, so we need to be able to introduce those in the right fashion. So here again, little eyelashes this side. And then larger, longer as they get to the middle of the eye. Flicking upwards and then they flick outwards as they come to the outer edge of the eye. Let's try and make them even so that it looks as though she bought both of them in the same packet and not one from Boots and one from Superdrug. Other stalls are available. There we are. And if you don't like the singular look of the eyelashes, when you reach that stage, just take a damp brush and smudge it. Just smudge it. All right. So I'm not too, again, I'm not too worried about this being starey eyes. We're going to deal with those in a minute. What I want to do is come back in and I want to look at this area here and think to myself, gosh, bless her, you know, she's, she's great, but she's a bit brown. She's been to Spain, obviously, and she's got this suntan, but I'd still like a bit of English rose in her cheeks. And to do that, you just take your alizarin crimson and you take the finest, thinnest wash of alizarin. I mean, like this thin colour. And this is glazing at its ultimate best. You're going to come in here and you're going to chuck that across there. See, chuck, good terminology. And then you're going to, with a damp brush, just soften, clean brush. So that you almost can't see it. But the point is, it is better to do that two and three times until you feel that it's right than to do it once and to get it too strong and it will make her look as though she's been at the sherry before dinner. Don't want that. What we're looking for is just a gentle, gentle blush. Just a blush. Okay. And that's where I would like to be at this stage before we start really putting some shadows in those eyes. So if we look at that and we feel happy with that, we can now go in and we can put some real shadows and some highlights in those eyes. Let me bring you back in so that you're as close as you can be to it. Down, I need you down. There you go. And what I want to do with this now is run a shadow right in underneath this top lid. That lid casts a shadow on the eyeball. Here it is. All right. And that can be as wide or as narrow as you want it to be, depending on how much light you anticipate, you know, coming from your picture and where it is. But what I want to do now is take the Payne's Grey. So it's the same Payne's Grey that I used in the corners. And I'm going to use a fairly wide brush. So this is my number four again. And I want to run this right across the whole shooting match. I'm coming in from the tear duct. As I said, that sits on its own. 
and I want to put this down on the paper and I'm going to run it right across the whole lot. And look how that closes that whole eye down and gives the whole face a different look. Again on the other side, let's do it now. From here, right across, smack it right over across through there. And that gives you this lovely depth, makes her eyes look a lot more interesting. Closes them down and instead of them being snappy and sharp and bitey, now suddenly she's looking a lot more appealing, a lot more appealing. But what we need to do is really, really put some life into this face now. We're going to do that with just a white gouache. I'm, just, I'm using the SAA here, but you can use a good quality white gouache. And use it quite thickly because white is a monster. You turn your back on it and you look back at what you've just done and it's not there anymore. It fades out so fast. So just be, be sure that you put plenty on. And I'm, I'm a bit of a stinker. I use mine directly from the tube, which is naughty, but hey-ho. I don't mix it with anything else, so it's not as I'm contaminating anything. And I want to use this to drop a highlight into the tear duct. There we go. So that just gives them a bit of light. I'm bringing you in a little closer again. I want to use this, which way do I need to go? To introduce some more highlights into her eyebrows. So if, if you didn't get that right and if you're not happy, just flick some more catch lights into her eyebrows and you can just stroke it with your finger to soften that. So just a few little where the lights caught her eyebrows. All right, so that makes them more interesting. And then we can also use this to introduce one or two little light eyelashes. So feel free to do that too. And then the other thing we need to do, of course, is put the highlight into the eyeball, it's into the iris and into the pupil. You can come into your yellow area and you can pop a bit of beautiful white into that if you'd like to, just to lighten it up. You can drop a lovely highlight into the pupil. Now, the interesting thing here is it doesn't really matter whether you want to drop it in to the left, to the right, in the middle. You can have two, you can have a ring, do four that looks like a window, lattice window, but for goodness sake, put them in the same place because if you don't, you'll be cross eyed. So, what we're going to do here, I want to drop one in there and I'm going to drop one in over here. So, as I say, watch it because these can fade out and uh, it's really annoying. So, I'm using that almost kind of in pasto there. Antipasto, as somebody once said to me, that was quite interesting. There you go. So that gives you your highlight in your eye. Now the other thing that you can do here, which will make this look quite, quite stunning, where your eye ball, the iris, sits on that bottom ledge of the, of your um, eyelid, take some white and just gently, gently drop in a squiggle of white there and it makes it look just like liquid in the eye. It just makes the eye look wet and that can make them look so much more exciting. And if we come out to the lips, down here the area of your lips that's going to catch the light is there, so pop some in. And then you're going to have little areas here where the light's catching her lips. There we are. So that makes that look more exciting. The next thing we need to do now is to come in and to have a go at the background and to give that some real oomph. Let me dry what we've got and I will be back with you in just a second. For the background, we're going to be fiercely brave. You and I, between us, are going to really 
um, give it some to be honest with you. I'd like to use all sorts of things. I have table salt, sprinkled table salt. I have a black India ink. I want to use yellow and orange brusho. And I have schminky copper powder. And I also want to use the paints that I've used here. This is a porcupine quill, but you can use a barbecue skewer or um, or equivalent, an orange stick. I'm going to use this to scratch the paper. And here I have a, um, a, a credit card, a you know, store card. And we're going to do some flicking. So, are you ready? Fresh water. And I'm coming in with a hate brush this time because I want to cover my background with water. I want control here and I'm bringing this right up to the face. Okay, so I want that to be a lovely line. Make sure we don't get any water on the face because I don't want um, anything to go wrong there. Not at this stage. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Go to all that trouble. And if I come through here and I wet my background. This is purely and simply to give me time to breathe and to panic. No, seriously, I'm running that into the skin of the neck so that the whole thing will just kind of transition there and I won't see it. It will just run into each other. And up through here. It's a fact that the edges of the paper dry more quickly than the rest of it, so I think that's due to the um, tape sucking out the water. So if you just pop round and give that a little bit more round here. And then we're going to start taking the colours that we have in our picture, and I just want to run it through and let it do its own thing. This is our girl's hair. Try and get a flow going so that it moves. And now I want to think about bringing some of that in close up to her face so that I get the edge now. Okay, here we're going with this is burnt umber. Hmm, can you hear the phone going? So, this is burnt umber. Pull it through. There, look at that. And of course, this down here would be really dark here underneath her chin and where the hair is coming out here from behind her neck. Now, it's really important that we get dark around these edges and this is why I've, I've grabbed the um, ink here. So this is a black ink. And I just want to pull that through. Fortunately, my paint is granulating already, which is rather quite... Oh, you, you never know whether it's going to or not. And when it does, it's just so exciting. Dark in there. Through here. Just let this do its own thing. I mean, that's the excitement of it, isn't it? There we go. Now, because we're using all these wonderful things, here with my porcupine quill, if I come up through here, this will actually scratch the paper, and where I indent the paper, the colour will run into the scratches. So that will give you some texture on your picture. I would like to take my salt, and I'm just going to sprinkle my salt in some of it, please don't use too much. The more you use, the more colour it takes out, and that's fine, but you'll find that you can land up taking so much colour out that you, you land up with no colour at all, and then that's really disappointing. I've got orange. This is my orange brusho, and I just pierce a hole with a needle in the top of my brusho so that I can sprinkle it where I want to and it doesn't go nuts on me. 
that's drying very quickly so therefore I'm going to come up to the top of the paper here this is my copper powder and let's just get some of that on there right now before it decides to dry so much that I can't use it. This powder needs the wet paint because it's the wet paint that activates the um, gum arabic in the copper, in the powder. So that's got to go in the dark areas, otherwise it's, it's a pointless exercise, you can't see it. So that's quite important to make sure you pop that in the right places if you're going to use that. And then my next thing is I have, that was orange, this is yellow, so this will also go in there and brighten up somewhat. We're still wet, it's still working, so we're still all right. And then I'm coming in with a rigger brush, so this is my zero rigger brush, let me show you. Lovely thin brush, and with that I'm going to take the darker colour, this colour I used in the eye sockets, and I'm going to pull some of that through. Start from off the paper, come up through the work. So don't start on the paper if you can avoid it, because of course that will give you a blobby mark where you first enter the paper. So here I'm going to have to, from the parting, down and through. I don't want too many sort of full stops on the paper, so that's the wet area. If I come up through the wet and do it that way, that might work. And then I want to pull a few through here. This is very harsh against the face. So if you want to soften that, get yourself a larger brush. So this is my number eight. And I want that to be quite, quite, not too wet. So come in and dab and damp. Just going to, there you go. So this is what I was saying to you earlier on about having control. Now I can soften that. But I, if it had run into the face in the first instance, I could have been in trouble with that. So that just softens it so that I don't land up with a really hard, hard edge down there. All right, that's better. Next thing I want to do with this is take my card. Do I, I actually, no I don't. I'm still, still at this, one minute. When you're onto it, do it. So this is this is Payne's Grey. I want some Payne's Grey hairs as well, up through the darker areas. Just like this. That's it. Need a bit of contrast through these areas here. Through the salt. Not too much, but just, just enough to give you a bit of oomph. Okie dokie. And then all I want to do with this now is to take a stiff brush. So this is my coma brush. Nice stiff little brush. And with this, I want to lift this dark from the skin. And I'm just going to throw a bit of that onto any areas like this that are a little bit dead because this doesn't read very well. There's not a lot going on here. So let's add some. It'll be soft here because the because it's wet, so it will just blend and blur. But of course, up here, it's hard. Flick away from your picture so that hopefully you don't get anything coming into here. I have a few flicks, but again, I'm not terribly concerned about that. It just makes it a little more interesting. And in actual fact, I think down here on the neck, I'm going to do just that to take away this hard, sharp edge that's here. I'm going to just flick a little bit in there, in the neck. Can you see that? Just about. Just about. And just to soften the harshness of this down here, I want to come back in with my brown and I'm coming into there. I 
want to do that. And then the whole thing kind of bleeds into itself. And hopefully, by the time you've done that and the silt comes off it, we'll have quite an interesting picture. So thank you for joining me. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing that today with you. Um, I hope you'll come back sometime and we can do something else. My name's Sharon Hurst, signing out. See you back in the studio sometime soon. Bye for now.